you got some money and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to get started. I want to invest. However, your overall financial picture is a hot mess. All right, guys. Today, we would like to mourn and put to rest all the investing mistakes that investors are making in the stock market. We know that sometimes these mistakes can feel deadly, at least deadly to your wallet. They can kill your wallet, y'all. Thus, you see us in our black. We are indeed in mourning, but it does not have to be that way. We can <laughs> jazz it on up for you guys and celebrate. You know, sometimes when somebody dies, you talk to those folks in New Orleans, they talk about, we are gonna have a little celebration up in here, okay? So, if you feel like your 401k has been like a 201k, I don't want you to cry about it, okay? I want us to party and celebrate together because we're about to tell you how to start making money in the stock market yes. by avoiding mistakes. costly mistakes. Yes. And Terry and I, we're gonna be honest with you guys. We say we're always gonna keep it real. We've made a lot of these mistakes too, you guys, okay? That's how we know what to tell you. <laughs> yes. So we're gonna keep it real. We had quite a few mistakes. Go get your notes, go get a pen and paper because you're going to want to come back to this. If you're a trader, you might need to put this note up onto your computer, like look at them on a regular basis, put these notes on your, your mirror because this is really important to make sure that you don't kill your wallet and you don't kill your account. That's right. And again, guys, Terry and I, if you've been watching our series here on whatever platform that you've been viewing us on, you probably know that we have two different dominant styles of investing. We do a little bit of both, but for the most part, I tend to be a long-term investor mm -hmm. and Terry is an active investor or a day trader. Day and swing trading. Day so and swing trading. I usually hold things up to a couple weeks at max, usually no more than a month or two. Right. Mm -hmm. So. She can make money in all kinds of markets, you guys. You know, that's how it goes. But we want to talk to you guys, like we said, about some really common and costly investing mistakes and how you can avoid them. So without further ado, dun, dun, dun. drum roll, please. <laughs> I think we'll jump right on in. Mistake number one that I'm going to highlight, and that is investing prematurely. Now, Here's what I've seen a lot of people do. And Terry, you correct me and tell me if I'm wrong here. Some of y'all, you come into a little bit of money. You got your $500, you got your $1,000, you got some money and you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna get started, I wanna invest. However, your overall financial picture is a hot mess, okay? You might have like credit card debt, you might have absolutely no savings, like literally zero or no emergency funds set aside. I don't know if you don't, you know, you haven't taken care of the will, the life insurance, the disability protection. I don't know. Some other aspect of your personal finances that need tending to in terms of just doing the financial basics. And in a lot of cases, your money, your $500, your $1,000, let's say, would be better spent handling those financial basics so you build a proper financial foundation from which you can invest. Now, I'm gonna let Terry jump in here because you can certainly trade and earn money to pay off debts or to reach some short-term goals. So I'm definitely not saying like you need to have it all together in order to first start savings, but I am, or first start investing. But I am saying that think about some of the financial basics and cover some of those before you launch right into a really proactive, longer term investing strategy. Yeah, to your point, I see oftentimes a lot of investors that are like, I'm just gonna go all in, I'm gonna put all my money into trading, and I'm like, well, did you save any on the side? <laughs> there's, there's a chance that you might lose. So you wanna make sure you've taken care of your budget and all those other things first, and then jump into being an active investor. If, you're, if you are thinking about being more active, especially, this is important too. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Another mistake that a lot of folks make mm -hmm. is not knowing when to sell. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking at you, Lynette. Like, where's the mirror? Okay, look at my phone or something. At you too, I'm looking at, she's told me about this so many times. <laughs> 
And I'm like probably the worst at this. I'm like, oh no, oh no, I see the red, I see the blood in the water. But then and again, I'm, she's your long term investor. That's true. So, and I'll be like, oh well, let me think about this three years mm -hmm. down the road, five years down the road. I'm looking at stuff for the long term. So I can afford to take some risk. And I understand that. However, it is still a problem if you don't have at the outset a sell strategy. Yeah. For most of my positions I enter into, I do enter into them thinking that I'm gonna hold them for the long term. But let's say you didn't. Let's say you went yeah. into uh, a position, you bought a stock, a mutual fund, an ETF or whatever, and then all of a sudden you were just like, you got panicked by something that happened in the market. Yeah. Either you got fearful and you panicked and sold in a down market or you got greedy, you know, and then you kind of chased returns mm -hmm. and you kind of bought after the fact or you sold at an inappropriate time. When you don't sell at the right time in the right manner and in a tax efficient way, I yeah. might add, that is one of the big investing mistakes you can make. Yeah, even this was on my list of mistakes too, even as an active investor. And when we say active, anything less than a year is a short term investment. So anytime that you're getting into a trade less than a year, you need to know where your target is. Like you should have an estimation of, okay, I'm getting into the stock at this price and I'm getting out at this price. And then when it hits that price, you need sell. to sell. <laughs> you need to, this is not the time, this is another mistake. You get to the target and then you get greedy. Absolutely. And you think, oh, I want just a little, a little bit, bit more. more. <laughs> if it just goes up one more dollar and you're, you're giving up $18 a gain for one more dollar, that is inevitably when it starts turning around, you start losing your gain because you get greedy because you didn't sell. Penny so, wise and pound foolish. Exactly. Yep. So yep. before you even get in, have an exit in mind. Absolutely. So another mistake that you might find that both newbie investors mm -hmm. and not just novice investors, but longer term, more sophisticated investors alike make is not repositioning their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is something that I think a lot of us need to do if we're in fact going to be longer term investors, because over time things can change. Your investment goals might change. As you get older, your risk tolerance might change. Yep. Um, a certain uh, percentage of your uh, portfolio overall might grow to a disproportionate level, which is sort of related to the next mistake I'm gonna talk about, which is not having an asset allocation strategy. So let me, I'm gonna let Terry jump in yeah. here, but just overall, the way I'm tying these two concepts together is your asset allocation strategy and check out our video about asset allocation yes, if you have not YouTube, seen that trade and already travel channel. Mm -hmm. it's really about what is the mix of investments that are in your portfolio right yeah. like what percentage is allocated towards stocks towards bonds towards cash or even other things towards commodities towards crypto towards alternative investments um, some people are into you know equity um, uh, venture capital. Um, some people do alternative investing like art, depending on how high net worth you are and kind of what your uh, risk profile is. But long story short, if you don't take care, you can find that, hey, I was 10% of my portfolio was allocated roughly towards yes. the pharmaceutical industry yep. or whatever. But then because maybe some of the stocks that you own in the pharmaceutical industry have a nice run, mm -hmm. those might start to become a greater percentage of your overall portfolio than you anticipated. And it might be like 20% now all of a sudden. So you really need to watch those too. Make sure that your asset allocation strategy is always in alignment with what you want. And also that you might have to reposition your portfolio, kind of tinker with things a little bit and rebalance that portfolio from time to time. 
You know what, Lynette? Like, as you were talking, I remembered another mistake that I often see traders make. Mm -hmm. And it's thinking of themselves as just a trader of single stocks versus thinking of themselves as a portfolio manager. Excellent idea. You are actually mm -hmm. the manager of your portfolio. And it may have, you know, three to five or three to ten positions as a trader. I usually try to do no more than five positions at a time. But I'm looking at what's the overall account balance of my overall portfolio. And then if I see a stock that's not doing well, okay, I'm selling that and then getting into one that is performing better. This is like a managing a, a company. If you have a staff member that's not doing so well, you have to let them go. Or if you have a staff member that's doing great, maybe you incentivize them, give them a raise. That for us would be investing in more of those shares. But you got to look at this as a business and overall portfolio manager, and, and then you'll be more successful. That's great. Mm -hmm. S stellar advice on that front. Um, yeah. I like that concept, too, of thinking that just like you're the CFO of your own financial life, you're the manager of your portfolio, whatever yes. size portfolio that is. OK, so another mistake, though, is knee jerk buying. Mm -hmm. And this is a mistake that, Ooh. you know, a lot Stay of folks too have, much. Been, Stay too much. have been guilty of. <laughs> I know what you did. You were you're watching somebody somebody else not us okay you're watching somebody <laughs> on youtube on tiktok or on instagram or on, yeah. on cnbc or you it know bloomberg tv at the at the you beauty could, shop totally, somebody says yes. it somebody's grandma water said. cooler conversation okay mm -hmm. you could have been at the at the you know car wash and you heard somebody <laughs> over you overheard them talking about a, a stock or something that you should did buy did you hear about this nft did, did you hear about this crypto coin did you hear about this, this stock, stock Next thing you know, you whipping out your cash, your hard earned money, and you're buying it. Well, you so have and so said, I no need to idea. get some. Right. It's only $3. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get me about $15 worth. Not <laughs> <laughs> buying five shares yeah <laughs> not knowing that that you know three dollars a share is about to go down to one dollar a share I mean, that fifteen dollars is about to be five dollars it's gonna go <laughs> down to two cents a share <laughs> i'm but being generous so with one dollar yeah <laughs> <laughs> they got an inside source mm -hmm. they got somebody at the company no or you know what? Come on, y'all. Uh, so we're we're joking about the downside, but it also happens on the upside too. That's true. Oh my gosh! Did y'all just hear that Amazon had this huge pop after earnings? Oh, did y'all just hear that so and so is about to announce this big deal with so and so? Oh, that did y'all hear that these shoes are about to come out? Well, all of us need to go buy Nike stock. Well, there was one phenomenon where everybody was going to buy Nike for something, but y'all, at when everybody's heard about it. It's the, too late. It's too late. The <laughs> stock has already risen in price. By the time you get in, it's about to fall. And we don't want to scare you because another one of our fears or one of no, another mistake is not getting started at all. So we'll speak to that. But guys, oftentimes the water cooler talk is too late. Yes. By the time everybody's talking about it, that's the wrong time to get in. Yes. So let's go and talk about that next mistake because that mm -hmm. is a big one. It's basically never getting started at all. It's like analysis by paralysis. Yeah. Or which way? I said it's the right. opposite. That's paralysis right. by oh. analysis. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's paralysis. Right. <laughs> you, yeah, you're not doing anything. You're stuck. You're not stuck. doing anything. Because you're one of those people who are like me. I, I don't have this problem. I actually have a bit towards and a bias towards action. But I am a big time researcher. Mm. I did my homework. I researched. Somebody want to tell me yes. that. Okay, that's great. You should do your homework and you should research. But don't research it to death, okay? Don't keep taking every course, yeah. every investing book you can read, right. every article online. Yeah, I have some every friends. Every show. Every girl, yes. You're spending all this money trying to learn, but you're never pulling the trigger. You're never buying. Yeah. So that's a mistake. I have some friends and even students in my course, and that's one of their biggest problems. They want to be... Perf like they want to be perfect yeah. before they start and they want yeah. to be experts no before they start. Yeah. But the stock market is like a moving being. It's almost like saying, I mm. want to be an expert at a parent, at, at a being a parent before huh. I become a parent. Huh. But every child is different, right? Huh. Yes. So you can't be a parent. Lord, I mean, I an expert it. before, before, and you know more and than I yes, do, but indeed. this is the stories I hear. Yes. So guys, you just got to jump in. You're not going to be an expert before. And this is, I'm going to call out some of my trade and travel students. Guys, this also pertains to you if you've been in your sim for the last year, two years, three years, and not actually taking a live trade. Your sim is your simulation account where yeah. you can practice 
trading. Mm -hmm. It's not your live account where you have real money. The sim is where you practice and you get good. You work on your strategies and then you go and you put up your real hard earned dollars to actually invest and trade. Yep. And I mean, another mistake could be not tra not practicing in a sim with some fake money before you get started. That's another mistake I I've personally done. I just jumped out there and then was like, ooh, did I just lose my money? <laughs> I did. And yeah, that um. market will hit you upside your head real quick. If you want to do that and just jump right in, oh, I don't need to practice. I don't need to. Oh, you just want to really try to go it alone, huh? Right. Okay. So I'm going to talk about that because that is a mistake that a lot of newbies and a lot of novices make. Yeah. It's overconfidence. And honestly, you know, there's been some studies about this. In general, men tend to be more overconfident in their trading prowess. I can see that. And yeah, they, they don't think they know thing. what they do. Yeah. <laughs> but did, well, did you know Fidel? I think it's Fidelity put out an article that women are better, better traders. traders yeah. Than, than men. I Shout did, out I, to I, the women. Okay, I, girls, let's go. Ladies, <laughs> but men, ladies. we love y'all too. Yep. Everybody, we love y'all. We love y'all all equally. <laughs> but we're just saying yes. that, you know, for a lot of you, you want to just go it alone, you want to go solo. Look, I get the whole DIY phenomena, do it yourself, or maybe you say, you know what, I, I'm handy with a hammer and I can just do it myself. I don't need to hire a carpenter. Maybe you say, look, I can wash my own car. You know what, I don't need to take it to the car, you're you know, wash it to the car wash. If you're a man, I don't need no directions. I just I, figure it out. <laughs> I know how to get there, really. Three hours later. Okay, that's another story. <laughs> but what we are saying is, when you're an investor and you're starting out, you know what? It actually pays oftentimes to have either a team or a trusted advisor, somebody who can coach you. You need your own little Sherpa, somebody who's gonna show you the path that they've been on and give you a guide or serve as a guide along the way so you can sidestep all of the pitfalls, all of the mistakes, all of the money losing mistakes that they've made. So, so you don't have to make those mistakes. Yes. <laughs> Y'all remember we're in black, right? We're in mourning today. We're in mourning today for yeah. the death of all those dollars that Dang. have been lost to an untold number of investing mistakes. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, another mistake is buying a stock or any security or investment right after there's been a run up. Mm -hmm. Now, come on now, you chasing returns. <gasps> oh, yeah, oh, I, I did see all of a sudden, it, it could be yeah. Tesla, it could be whatever. Oh, it this ran is, up. I, it, yeah, it ran, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and see how, how the market goes. People yeah. do this with other things too. They do this with, with houses. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you keep waiting and, and you're going and the next year, the next rising, year, the next year. Rising. Yeah, you're going to pay before and you, you miss your opportunity. Right. You, you could have paid 250 for that house or 350. Mm -hmm. Oh, now that house is 450 or 550. They, you know, 550,000, I'm talking about. Some okay? of my neighbors actually said that the, my neighborhood, especially, yes. you know, the house, housing yes. prices have been going up. They were like, dang, we should have bought when you bought two years ago because now they're all $200,000 higher. You know, just crazy. Same. Sometimes waiting is not positive. Sometimes Absolutely. there's an opportunity cost to waiting and not Absolutely. getting in. And in this case, what happens is I, I tell my students, it's fear of missing out. You wait, you wait, you wait. FOMO. And, by the, and, it's, and the stock's just running up. And by the time you actually get in, you're scared at this point. You're like, oh, man, I can't believe I missed out. Everybody else made money. Let me not miss out. And you're at the highs. You're buying at the high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't want to chase returns after a stock has already had a huge run up. Again, that's basically yeah. a recipe for financial failure.